All right, team. So I quickly wanted to create a video just to show you how to create callbacks when using Next Auth and the Prisma adapter. So in, in my use case, I want to be able to create a username when a user created an account. That, as default, that's not a something that gets set up. So in our instance, we as soon as the user creates an account, we want to set a default username. To do that, we needed to hook into the Prisma adapter and override the create user method. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's jump in and take a look. So the first thing I just want to quickly show you is how we or how I found this. So inside of the next auth repo, there is a packages folder and then there's adapters. And in here you can see the Prisma adapter. Inside of the source, we can see the index file. Now inside of here, you can see there's a whole bunch of documentation, but down the bottom, every adapter exports a function. And what that does is it exposes certain methods inside of an object. So we're interested in this create user method over here. We want to override this so that instead of just creating the user, we actually want to do a little bit more. We want to update the data and inject some stuff here. But you can see there's basically every method here. You could override that and do whatever you needed to do. All right, to create custom custom functions. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just set up a new T3 app. So I just jumped onto create.t3.gg, ran npm create, and I've set up a new project called Nexorth Demo. All right, so we'll jump into that. Um, we'll run Prisma DB push, and we'll also then run npm run dev. All right. All right. So the main thing that we want to look at now is inside of this repo. Let's open it up. We can, the main pieces of the puzzle are in here. So we got server API. It looks like they've changed this a little bit. Here's the next auth options. So this is in here now. Slightly different to how it is in, in my 4x4. But we can see this here. And then also wherever we export these auth options. We just want to grab them and have a look. Um, where are we using them? So here, so they're also exporting this function here. You can see here we grab the auth options. Okay, so the, the way to override this, there's a few little steps here. So the, this, um, I'm just trying to see here. So we got to export const get server auth session. Um, and what else do they export from here? We've got export these two exports. Okay. I'm a little bit, it's a little bit different to the my 4x4 directory. I'll pull that over and you can just see what I'm talking about. So in previous ones, you'd have auth and then next auth here. And then down the bottom would export this um, next auth function, uh, which came from next auth, which let's see if they're still where they're doing that now. So we want to look for that. So that's now sitting in there. Pages API auth. Okay, so that's still there. So this function here. So you can see that at the moment, we're just calling auth options directly from the server auth, which is this object here. Now what we need to do is we need to create, so I'm just using my 4x4 as a reference because I've done it in here. We need to create a custom Prisma adapter. So at the moment we're importing Prisma adapter direct, but what we need now is a custom Prisma um, adapter. So I'll set that up. So I'll show you what that looks like. So in here, let's just go above here. All right, so this will be a function and I'm, I'm naming it custom Prisma adapter. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna take in Prisma, right? So that's similar to this one, taking in Prisma. And then what we're doing is I'm also going to pass in the request and the response. And the reason I did that in, in my four by four was because I wanted to grab a cookie. So I wanted to be able to look at the um, request. And then from there, I wanted to be able to grab the cookies using um, next cookies. Uh, oh, sorry, cookies next. So you can see in this one here, I'm grabbing the cookie and to do that, I need the request and the response. So it depends on your use case. You may not need that. Um, and that would be a simpler version. So I guess what we can do is we can just do a real simple version of this. So 
the basic implementation now, what we what we could do, expect to do, return exactly the same would be doing this. We'd cut this, and now this function just purely just returns this. Right, and then we can go here, and we can pass in Prisma. All right, and that would be our custom custom Prisma adapter. Okay, but now that's not exactly what we want to do because this is just doing, I mean, this is really doing nothing, right? So what we're going to do here instead is we're going to return an object. And because we know that the Prisma adapter from here is actually just returning an object, we know that when we call it, we're just going to get an object back. So what we're going to do is we're going to spread in the result of that. So this is still, again, the exactly the same implementation that exists. But now what we can do is we can now say this, we're going to create the original, but now we want to override this method. We want to override this method, right? So if I copy paste it, this is again, exactly the same implementation. We're pasting and we're just overriding. But now what we can do is we're going to say, okay, well, this is not exactly what we want to do here. We're going to return that still, right? Still the same implementation. But now what we're going to say is, we want to generate a username, all right? So we're going to say username is equal to user hyphen some variable. So what I did in the other one is I'm using a CUID. So we'll just plop that in there. And then now whenever the user logs in or is created, we're going to say it's going to be user CUID and generate a new CUID there, all right? So let's just double check that. I probably haven't installed this package. You get the idea, right? So that would be username. And now what we can do here is when we're creating this user, we're gonna still pass in the data, right? So that's the same implementation. But now what we're gonna say is username is set. We're gonna have a few warnings here because we haven't actually set up the model correctly. But this shows you how you can do these things very easily. So if we were to just go in here now and we said we had a user and we just say username, is a string and it's unique, that's right. And then if we ran npx, um, where are we? We run npx prisma db push. Um, yep, and then we run dev again. Um, you should see that error go away. Now what's this unsafe of any? Cause that thinks it's just an any. Okay, that's just a type error. We also need the CUID package, but we don't need that for now for the example. So, but what I'm just trying to show you here is now we can create a custom Prisma adapter that wraps the original, basically returns the original, and then we override specific methods. And this allows us to hook into that adapter and do special logic. So I found this um, extremely useful because in my 4x4, what we're doing now is we are grabbing a cookie from the user who referred someone. We grab that and we grab that ID and then we store, when a new user create, creates an account, we store the ID of the user who referred them to that, to the app. And then we also create the username. So that means we have users, as soon as they log in, they have a username, it's not blank. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, it's reasonably simple to set up in the basic implementation. But I'll give you one other thing here, is if you need the request and response, so say you needed to get cookies or something out, you just have to change this bottom default export, right? So down the bottom here in next auth, currently it just exports like this. What you can do is you can also grab the request and the response and you can pass it into next auth as request response and then auth options from here. Because we've made, um, so auth options like this now what we have to do here with auth options is turn auth options into a function, not just an, an object, but a function that actually returns an object, right? So what we did here was this, right? So it returns an object. Okay. So now what it's doing is auth options expects two parameters, request and response. 
and it returns an object. So it's still returning the same shape. And then when we call this, now we call context.request contents.response there. And you also need to do the same thing here, right? And we get rid of this one. Okay, so now whenever we call auth options, we expect request response. Now we have those variables available. So we can pass these in here, right? And then these two now become params up here. Now we have the ability to use this request and response object inside of our, our adapter. So we can now go and like in my 4x4, we can go and grab a cookie, for instance, which requires the request and the response. All right, so something like this. So if you wanted to grab a cookie using next um, cookie next, you can pass, get the cookie key and pass the request and response in. And now you have, you can read your cookies. So very powerful and just allows you to do a lot more customization. This is something that I kind of missed from Rails was the ability to do callbacks or override callbacks on, on the adapters. But doing a little bit of digging, we're able to do the same thing. So hopefully that's helpful, guys. Catch you on the next one.